Hi everybody, my name is Velma Key Craig. I'm a Navajo textile artist and I also teach weaving workshops um, for different organizations around the valley. I'm here with my daughter Ashley. I'll let Ashley introduce herself. Hello, my name is Ashley Mary Craig. I am a beginning textile weaving artist and I'm also a visual artist who likes to draw and paint. So we're here today to um, teach you how to weave on a cardboard loom. We have here all of the materials to make the loom. When I'm weaving a Navajo textile, I do make sure to use wool, wool yarn. Um, so I have some of that here. Um, but also, if you want to be experimental or you don't have yarn, you don't have to go buy yarn, um, what we've done is just cut up some old material. So old t-shirt, we cut them into strips so that we could weave with them. I have here a shopping bag. So we've cut shopping bags into strips so that we could weave with them as well. There's no um, limit. Whatever you have at home, whatever you decide that you want to try to experiment with, um, go ahead and do that. You know, this is going to be a fun time. Uh, so the first thing we're going to do is make our loom. All right. We have three cardboards here. Ashley's going to make her own loom. I'm going to make my loom. So what we want to do is we want to decide the shape of our loom, the size of our loom. I'm going to make mine a square. So I'm going to cut mine a little smaller. Um, and we'll just set this aside. Somebody else can use that. Somebody else can make their own loom. And then what I'm going to do is with my ruler, I'm going to mark um, the top and bottom of my loom. So I like to be exact, but you don't have to be perfect. So I'm going to make my little grooves like a half inch apart. So on the top and on the bottom, I'm just going to use the Sharpie to make half inch marks all the way across um, the top and the bottom. And then Ashley can make her own loom, but I've got the marker right now. So when I'm done, um, Ashley will go ahead and decide how she wants to um, make hers. All right, so I'm done with the marker. <laughs> so while she's marking her cardboard loom, here's what my marks look like. Okay, these are just guides. And what I'm going to do after that is just cut little slits um, at those places where I made the markings. If you're finding that a half inch apart is too close, like if your material is big, you know, cut into wider strips, or if your material is um, fluffier or just wider, you might consider making these tick marks further apart, so maybe three quarters inches. But next, what we're gonna do is we're gonna put the string through that we're gonna weave on. So we need our strips of tape here. And you just need to slip it through there, tape it. You can see there where I taped that first string. Okay. And then you're just gonna wrap it in like, just wrap it in a spiral around the, um, the cardboard. So this is gonna be the string that we weave onto. On a Navajo loom, actually, and on this loom too, the strings that you weave on are called um, the warp. So this is our warp that we're making. So after I'm finished with the last row, we can go ahead and cut the string in the back and then use a second piece of tape to just tape it. So I have my first tape there and then I have my last tape. Um, there. Okay, and here's my first loom. So give Ashley the string. We finished our looms. We've gathered everything here that we've talked about earlier. Um, we have some shopping bags uh, in different colors. 
so that we can make a colorful creation. We have some scraps of material in different colors and patterns as well. And then we have good old fashioned yarn. We're free to pick from any of these items to start our weaving. So I'll start with yarn. Okay, I'm gonna start with, um, I'll do pink. I'm gonna start with some blue plastic bag. So I'm just gonna break off some yarn and what I wanna do, if you have a needle, it might make this go easier. So I'm gonna show you a trick. Um, so the needle has, you know, a tiny hole big enough for a string. This yarn can go through the eye of this needle pretty easily. But if I were weaving with one of these materials here that are thicker than a piece of yarn, I would be having a very difficult time if I tried to squeeze that through the needle. So what we can do is grab a piece of string and make ourselves a, I guess this is called a lead. So make ourselves something like this to help us bring the, um, materials through. So Ashley was bringing this, it might be easier to bring the shopping bag through with that. If it doesn't work, um, not a big deal. Okay, so all I'm doing is just going back and forth um, between the strings with the yarn. At the beginning, uh, we're just gonna leave this hanging out. That's the tail. Once we get to the um, end, we're just going to go back around that last string and we're going to turn around and go back the other way. So you can see here that this yarn um, is in front of the string, this first row. So um, you should be alternating on your second row. So if on the first um, row, the yarn was behind the, sh the warp string, uh, on my second row, it's gonna be in front of the warp string. So we're gonna do that alternating of, oops, there we go. So I'm done with my second row. Now I can turn around again and go back the other way. So don't worry about that first loose tail. We'll take care of it at the end. Just gonna weave this little piece of pink yarn until I am all done. So now I'm um, pretty much at the end of my um, pink yarn. So I'm just gonna leave that end also um, sticking out the end. And then I'm gonna choose, let's see, what shall I choose next? This blue looks amazing. Okay. Yep. So I'm gonna do a little stripe of blue. So we're just going to keep weaving, following the same pattern that we've done. So this pink um, yarn ended on top of the last warp. So this start, the blue is going to be starting behind that first warp. Bring it all the way through and it's not really long enough to do a second row. So we'll just push it down and leave both of those ends sticking out the sides. And I'll go ahead and pick another color. Ashley's picking another color as well.
every time I change color, I'm just leaving um, the, the starting ends and the ending ends um, hanging out the sides. I've been doing the same thing. It looks a little more wild than mine. <laughs> I'm kind of squishing mine down, but you know, you don't have to squish it down super, super tight um, if you don't want to. You can let it be loose. Both of us are making completely different things. And I always like that about art, how people just get to be creative. So you can finish the project whenever you want. It doesn't have to go all the way to the top. So Ashley's decided she's finished. She has all of her loose ends here. So what she's gonna do is tuck in what she can. So just the same as I did, she's gonna use the needle and bring the yarn up through this last row. But then whatever you know she can't tuck in or if, she, if you just don't wanna tuck them in, you can just tie the loose ends together if they're close into a knot and then you can cut um, the little excess so that it's smaller. So Ashley's all done. Um, she tucked the edges in very nicely. You can see that with the t-shirt material, the fabric, um, a lot of it is thicker than the yarn. So with the yarn we can easily tuck them into the sides but um, we can't really do that as easily with some of the thicker materials. So what we've done instead is just tied knots and then cut the ends as short as possible to make it nice and neat. So you can see that done in a couple places there and that's okay. So now what we're gonna do is remove it from the loom. Ashley took the tape off already, uh, off the two, two ends and then now she's gonna take a scissor and cut across the middle. Alright, so now we can flip it back to the other side and she's just going to remove the strings two at a time. So remove two of them from the loom and then tie them together in a double knot. It's safer to do it this way. Um, I like removed all of the strings together all at once and I almost pulled strings out like all the way through and ruined the weaving. So. It's safer to just remove a few at a time and then tie them in a knot and then we're going to continue with the other side. So we're all done with our weavings. We had a friend make this one. <laughs> all right, so I already went ahead and cut the, um, the tops and bottoms, the fringes, so they're all the same length and they're shorter. You can do that with these others, or um, the other option is you can take them. If you don't want a fringe, you can take them and you can tuck them back through the, the wefts, the same as we did with the sides. That's more work, but it's up to you, however you want your textile to be. Um, we also have these the cardboard looms, they're reusable, so we don't have to toss them away and start new each time. You can reuse the same cardboard looms. So we're all done. That's how you make a weaving on a cardboard loom. Thank you, everybody. Thank you.